Looney Tunes? Yeah, it was actually some cool little character de development with the Looney Tunes. Like, Bug was actually, like, had, like, a, a purpose. Like, he was trying to do something. He was trying to bring everybody back together. Okay. Yeah, and they're, like, all in the different, like, universes. Like, that, that was dope. <laughs> Posted up. Kind of like the Avengers. <laughs> had to get yeah. everybody from their little universes. <laughs> yeah. All love to say the world. They had to go to Harry Potter universe. They had to go to uh, Matrix universe to get all the little Looney Tunes. It was kind of cool. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was honestly for me that was the part of the movie like I was like LeBron all that LeBron and his son shit I was like all right <laughs> they needed to have some kind of story though like a plot Absolutely. like <laughs> a reasoning behind it so and I, I mean if I was a kid I don't think I'd be mad at that movie I mean I wasn't I, I thoroughly enjoyed it <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, I, like it was solid. I, mean, I didn't like, watch it yet but I'm planning on watching it I think a lot of adults have their little problems with it but like I think, like, kids would enjoy the new Space Jam. So, like, people who know all the stars. I, I thought it was cool that they included WNBA players. They were hilarious. They're little uh, monsters. <laughs> I, I seen the in the trailer. Yeah, they were funny. They were hella funny. That's what's up. So, yeah, I, I thought it was a decent movie. I mean, I, I didn't really have no problems with it, you know, people – Say they want to say about LeBron, but you know he's a he's a family friendly guy. Uh, you know he's doing things for his legacy. You mm -hmm. know, so you can always admire and appreciate that that he's doing the smart thing rather than doing you know whatever or not really thinking about what his impact is going to be long term. So that's something. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. something you respect about him. That's what's up. Yeah, but. I don't know, like what's uh, what else been going on? You, you guys, Solomon, you got anything you been doing? Chilling? Uh, not much. I'm trying to get back into like hooping and playing soccer. So I've been being a little bit more active recently. I feel um, that I've been. I'm trying to. Um, I'm, find, I'm looking for like a adult league right now. For sure. Yeah, you texted me about that uh, a couple weeks back, and I'm down to do it whenever, wherever. I just gotta. You Man, know, I'm just, I'm just versus trying to find <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, it's about that time, like just to get get everything. Like that's part of the steps of getting back into normal, getting yourself into a rec league. Um, for me, it's definitely one of those. Like, all right, now I'm back at work. Got a this. These are my gym times. So this is what I'm gonna schedule out for the rest of the week. You going back in? I'm, I'm Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm back in the office. Yeah. Oh okay. shit. Been there. Yeah, it's crazy. It's been a transition. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I've had to like you know, wake up like an hour earlier. Um, I try not to do that. And it's just like, I can't do that anymore. I need the time to prepare, um, get ready for the day. And so um, Tuesdays, Thursdays right now, I think it's going to be like that till the end of the year, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, my job said like, they're going to start like rolling out mandates in September for certain departments. So we'll see if my department's affected. Good job. Yeah. But let's just get straight to it, yo. This is the Mostly Bullshit Podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Brandon. And yeah, I'm Solomon. Yep. And this is the weekly catch up between three former college roommates. Where we just basically talk about what's going on in the world. Uh, we go through their intricacies, uh, the nuance, the detail. But honestly, we're mostly bullshitting. Um, usually, every week, we start with Mike with his topic. Uh, Mike, what you got for us today? Yeah, so I don't know. So last, I think it was last week, uh, Richard Branson completed his uh, first, like, or he's trying to launch like commercial, like space travel. Um, so he launched on his first like um, rocket to orbit the Earth. Um, and there's uh, quite a bit of like controversy around it from the woke crowd. Um, people are upset saying that billionaires are spending all this money on space travel so that they can leave Earth behind when. <laughs> climate change eventually gets to us and takes over. Um, I kind of don't like dip into that kind of conspiracy theory of like, that's why billionaires are pushing space travel so much because to be honest, like the first people that go to space are probably going to die there. <laughs> and like, that's like the, like that, 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 that's all it is. Like, so I don't see why you would want to push. I mean, within your lifetime, try to push to go to space, tra uh, travel to space. If like, it's it's not like feasible within our lifetime for that to happen. To travel uh, to space? 
No, I'm not, I'm not, not saying to travel, like to actually like go like Elon's trying to go to Mars, like to try to colonize Mars. Like that's not something that's going to happen within his lifetime. So that's why like, I don't buy into like the conspiracy theories that you this is know, why Mike. billionaires are. Uh, I feel like, why do you say it's not gonna happen? yeah, why do you say it's definitely not going to happen? Not within our, like his, his lifetime. Like you think they're going to literally go to Mars and like get terraform it all within like these not next terraform it no i would just say like be able to live on mars for like a week yeah i think they're already planning yeah. on doing that like in like a couple but years. like but like but the conspiracy theory is that they're doing it so that they can escape earth when earth eventually becomes inhabitable like yeah, that's the it's, a little, it's a little too far fetched for that like there's like you're are you really planning for like four generations down the line yeah, like yeah that, that, that's 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 my point. Like, like, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see that. Yeah, I think they are. I think, they are. I think what you don't think the rock. Two thousand like and the rock. Have you, the, have you seen the movie two thousand twelve? I can see that. I can see that. Have you seen the movie two thousand twelve? But parts of it, like it's just basically that co- the concept that you're pretty much bringing to life, Mike, um, or the conspiracy theorists are t- attempting to bring to life, where, um, like the nature's forces have pretty much gotten to a point where it is no longer sustainable for humans to live on earth and 2012 was about like pretty much it was supposed to be a fair i think it was supposed to be a fair system about getting people onto ships so they can um survive out like whatever was about to happen on earth and see after this event that happened on earth i think it was supposed to be a natural disaster where humans wouldn't like live it was like an arc so, or something and then there's like volcano and then, like there's like some type of earthquakes that were causing tsunamis across the so, and so it wasn't necessarily like we're leaving to mars but the, the earth was going to be in a really fucked up place and they still needed those ships to like rely on so they were gonna and, like they, their plan was probably to like orbit around earth until it settled down and then exactly. they're gonna go back yeah, it's like a hard- I could see, I could see that. I could see that as a conspiracy theory. Like if if climate gets so extreme for a while, then they everyone just kind of like, or all the billionaires take their families and, and it's literally what around Earth it for a while. Just yeah. like, it was billionaires, and then there is like some soft moments where billionaires felt bad for poor people, and then there was some I don't know what exactly happened, but one of the billionaires was like, "We need to let some of the people who make you know who are middle income." get on the boat and then it just then turned into like this world war z scene where like you see a shit ton of people trying to get like 60 spots while the billionaires have been on the ships for like a minute comfortably yeah, yeah. that's what i just thought of but I, <laughs> nice. I, I, I can see it i can see it like i can see the conspiracy I, I just don't see it like the way it's spelled out in this specific one yeah like there the I can, I, I, yeah, I can definitely see why people are leaning towards that. But like at the same time, like, I don't know, I just think space is dope as fuck. So like anybody that's trying to like perfect space travel and like progress it, like, I think that's dope. And I think we should continue to push for it. What if, um, what if climate change is making Earth uninhabitable for white people? I mean, I, it kind of already is. I mean, you saw, you see, like the, the floods they're not and trying to go to space, not just because like the Earth is going to be destroyed, but like they're not. It's not good for them. They're anymore. not going to last within the the with Earth's trajectories. Climate, like they're they're. Oh, but they but at the same time, like them. <laughs> if, if, but at the same time, life. like if they, if they if they put the same amount of money that they put in the space travel into like solving climate change like i feel like that would that's like a way easier solution though as well like didn't that require work mike <laughs> but i mean so does fucking building rocket ships like <laughs> that, that like who's building a, rocket ships not i mean huh? people all over the world are building rocket ships like but i mean like I'm, I'm talking about the elons and richard bransons of the world that are building like ships to like travel like deeper into space like you yeah, people are building like what type of like uh, rockets are you like talking about right now? Like Just I'm saying like, like that. I'm talking about commercial space travel, like what Richard Branson is trying to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, commercial space travel, yeah, that's gonna be accessible to just rich people for a while. But I can see it like eventually becoming like as they perfect the technology, it becoming 
you know, cheaper and cheaper. It might not be cheap within our lifetime, but like, uh, uh, not, not, not like. I don't see it ever being cheap, Mike. I, th- I, I see that being like a way to stratify people. Like, I don't, I don't see it. As long as the currency is fiat, I don't see it ever being cheap. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's where crypto comes into play. Right, exactly. <laughs> but I, I mean, who knows? It's hard to it's hard to say. But um, yeah, that that was just kind of my take. Um, I don't necessarily think there's much conspiracy to it right now. I mean, maybe people are thinking, yeah, generations down the road. But um, I truly think that we can solve things here on Earth with a little bit of effort and. Uh, yeah. It, it's possible honestly like if all the billionaires leave then that would leave us a place where we can actually mold the world into what we want it to be because right now they pretty much control everything <laughs> I, I, I was gonna just i was gonna quickly say i i low-key disagree with that because what usually happens is billion it's just a power back yeah like if once everything becomes like even like you know hypothetically um, what eventually happens is there's going to be power grabs because you can't motivate like mountains of people without wielding influence. And the only way to wield yeah. influence is power here. I mean, damn, that sucks. <laughs> so there's yeah, just no, so, I mean, it's just like, you need to have better intentions out of your billionaires or the influential people, which is not. And how do they get the billions in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They were focused on getting billions. Yeah, right. they were focused on. They were not, you don't become. But, uh, you don't become a billionaire <laughs> focusing on other people. Also, like at the same time, though, how would those billionaires maintain that control if they left Earth? Like, if like if it's just a select, like if it's literally just the richest people in the world that leave, like who decides who's in charge of all those rich people? Like, I mean, how does it, there's if, like, if Jeff Bezos lives on the moon for a year and Amazon keeps on running, like. <laughs> He, he is it's still his money like he still owns it yeah but what i'm saying is like so like the back to the original theory was that like they're trying to terraform mars so they can go legit live on mars if, or if shit's bad on earth but like if there's not enough people to go with them to live on mars and actually help do the work to terraform farm uh you know actually do the functions that we do here on earth um at an even more extreme level like how are they really going to sustain that yeah that, like you they would need to, to bring pay, like yeah, you, would, you literally have to pay a shit ton of people an exorbitant rate to yeah. like work there i don't know for life it's, it's just ridiculous it's not it's not it doesn't seem feasible to me yeah at the moment but, <laughs> at the moment. Gonna, like send supplies back and forth between Mars, like yeah, see that's super expensive too. Yeah, so like, eventually, like, the, like I know like, billions is a lot, but damn, like intergalactic I mean, shipping, like what the fuck? <laughs> what <a great laughs> time, like at that point, like then, then like the traveling into space should be not like relatively cheaper to what it is today. Like I'm if they're like, sending supplies back and forth like that, like we would have figured out a way to like, because like once you have the design down like of all the engineering and all the calculations, it's just about mass producing the materials to replicate that design. Um, and it's also the cost. It stops so. mass production, like, or what, like, that's what I'm saying. They can, they can, mani- they can manipulate the cost of something whenever they feel like it. Mm-hmm. And you think that will cover, like the thing is, regardless of that, you feel like it. You, are you saying like theoretically like, all this space travel that Richard Branson and Elon Musk? Oh yeah, it's for sure subsidized to to a degree. Like <laughs> I'm just saying they just they, they you can pull money out of your ass to get this shit done if you really want it done. It's just that the people in charge in this country manipulate shit. Or in every country. But I'm just yeah, saying like, sure, like they just I, I still have a hard time. How do you subsidize shipping through space? Like you can't like cut down who who like do you like, think like with is, service like Amazon will have, like theoretically I'm only using Amazon as an example because it's just the most money dispo- disposable income that I believe I believe they just have the most money but will they be able to sub- subsidize their own costs by like manufacturing the entire like shipping system themselves 
or would they have to like go through like some third party contractor that's proven? Because I feel like you need to have some sort of regulated, like space travel has to be regulated in some way, right? I mean, space, yeah, or, eventually, regardless of eventually, whether like, you're traveling a, humans or items. Yeah. Right. I agree. It's some, yeah, you can't like just be bringing like random shit back from like, so space. Even, and, like, even, even if it is subsidized, I think the, just the expense, like the expense rate of moving back and forth may not be feasible for the purpose unless there is no other option. Like if we're pressured to like live on another planet, I think that would be the only thing kind of pushing us towards that moving on to another country, uh, another like planet. But until that time, I don't think that the money will. But they print it, Solomon. I but they print it. I just don't understand how two planets can have an economy that interacts with one another, even though I can easily understand two countries. You can just print it, though. <laughs> Whatever money you need, you can just print it. I like, it. But those are governments from the Earth, like, that are printing this money. Like, it's only, like, will the, I don't know, will this terraformed new place, <laughs> uh, like, uphold the social agreement to like money because it's because humans are interacting with it or will it have like i don't know i feel like with with a different place i i i can't fully form out what i'm attempting to say but no. there's be a, just due to the different dimensions and properties of that planet there will have to be additional things to adjust to it and it's just going to be a lot more expensive. And I know that we print money, but one, it's not the incentive of, I think, an Earth government to move out to an extra, like a different country unless they have like a financial gain. Oh, what is the financial gain of going to Mars? Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't, unless, unless there is a natural disaster, kind of like, what I was said in that one movie where it literally human lives depend on it. If it doesn't make the government money, why would the government invest in it? Or I don't know, subsidize things. It, theoretically subsidizing would be another form of investing um, to kind of get back what uh, you kind of put money in, like a return on investment. What would, what would earth get back theoretically? Like outside, cause like the billionaires can act on their own. Like, if this is purely an interest of someone who is rich and wants to do something that's perfectly fine, but if there's a higher purpose, there has to be some social structure involved. Like, I believe that has to be the government for this time. If the billionaires have like the foresight, which I definitely believe they do, to create their own government. On Mars, like- On with Mars. Those, what so is like since already happening with corporations though, is that that is what we're moving towards is corporations are becoming more powerful than governments. Bro. I mean, they already they already are. <laughs> you think Mars is going to be Tesla like three oh five five by like in the next five I mean, years? Like, who 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 else would have like the right to it though? Because like I mean, no no country on Earth has claim to Mars. Same with like any other interstellar I, body. So yeah. like if if Elon Musk takes his squad and like they fucking go on mars like they won't be regulated by the american government like by any government like elon musk can literally form the government of mars if he wanted to like <laughs> if like eventually travel there becomes if they do if they successfully terraform it and they can agree to bring more people than the initial the than the initial mission mm -hmm. then like uh, <laughs> like eventually some kind of structure will have to be formed i don't know what was involved in terraforming I mean, that's like changing the atmosphere of the planet, correct? Yeah, but they gotta like, I don't know what they do, but fuck, like, that sounds very difficult. Right. I don't think they're gonna do all, I don't expect all of that to happen. <laughs> but um, I do see them setting up little bubble tents to live in and then shipping shit every seven years. I can see that. Yeah, every. Yeah, I can see that. Just get the, the pack comes in. <laughs> yeah, the pack comes in every seven years. <laughs> but like, what if there's other needs outside of the initial pack? What needs? 
I don't know. Like, well, like the idea is that they need to like start growing their own food there. Like they're going to have to do that. Like, <laughs> agriculture. Like, uh, yeah. Like, Apparently you can do it according to that. Uh, what's that movie? The Martian. Fill it. Man. It's yeah. like running water. That was all based on, like, that was based on real science. That whole movie. I get that. It just, I, it's just for me, it's, it's, it's really hard to comprehend. Like the solar power would be crucial. So yeah, developing solar. We talked about that last uh, mm-hmm. pod would be crucial to that because like the sun's power on Mars is obviously way weaker. And then like, so yeah, just the little bit of power that they can harness from that. And that's where like having the batteries is like, because yeah, electricity is probably the one of the most, the imp- most important thing they're going to need to have going. Yeah. Yo, uh, I gotta be, I'm gonna be right back. I gotta pick up my DoorDash. I will yep. be back in like two minutes. Oh yeah, so yeah, good. All right. Well, we can we can make that the intermission <laughs> between this and the next between topics. Uh, topic. Yeah, but yeah, man. Crazy to think about. <laughs> a lot of bullshit and no. <laughs> yes, man, but we got we got bigger things to think about. I mean, I saw a um Gil Scott Heron poem that was posted on Instagram and went viral. But it's like an old poem. It's called Whitey on the Moon. He was like, he, I think it was like a rat bit my sister and Whitey's on the moon. Basically, like I got real shit to deal with before I deal with like <laughs> Yeah, worrying about inner right stellar travel. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. And that's what they're worried about, obviously. Mm. So like while we're dealing with this shit, this is that is their, that is their focus. So we, I mean, it's interesting to try to understand why, you know, there there must be some type of financial gain, must be some type of, um, like, desperation caused by maybe like existentialism, like they don't understand, like see themselves living for that long, maybe or I don't know. I mean, I can see like death, like if I had the means to go to space, like I'd do it, but like I just. That's right. Yeah, but it's just, like, there's no way I can fucking do that. So, like, that's why, like, I, like, just having the interest to just see the Earth, like, like, actually see the whole thing, like, that'd be crazy to me. But, um, so, I mean, if they have... This is just, this is just rich guys just being curious, you think? Yeah, that's what I think. But, I mean, that's just coming from me. I've always been interested in space, and, like, I love watching space movies, so, like, um if i had the opportunity to see it with my own eyes like i'd do it in a heartbeat or if i had the means to get to that salute like get to that place i'd do it and that's what richard branson did like he said it was always his dream to do space travel and he lived his dream like mm-hmm. but yeah, no, he was really out there that was cool man that video he dropped um i mean what i Everyone likes to say, like, if they had that money, like, they, you know, do great, good things with it and just donate it all and mm-hmm. all that. But, I mean, that's just what they say. <laughs> they ain't going to have that opportunity, most likely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like a lot of what stops people from getting to that point where like everybody can participate in this kind of thing is like access to capital and how it's being manipulated by lobbyists and governments. Um, that fucking sucks, man. Right. So I mean, like. I mean, yeah, it's it's tough, man. Like you don't know, you don't know how far you can really go because it's like it's always that. Yeah, like I I just saw something on I saw something online where this company or like these this team of people they're trying to like it's called biohacking insulin, mm-hmm. so they're essentially trying to make like an exact replica of the insulin that you know there's the major companies that sell insulin do. And then just like at a way lower price, just like they're doing it for the people, like to like stop these companies. But like what I feel is going to happen is those companies are going to heavily 
lobby the government to shut that program down. They're going to like come up with some bullshit saying, oh, it's unsafe. It's unregulated, la, la, la. Like that's what they're going to do. There's like it. Tell me instances of that. Yeah. Like anytime someone develops something that's cheaper, like it probably gets shut down by the FDA or whoever controls like the type of the medicine that can come out. And like, because there's heavy influence from these major pharmaceutical companies, so they can stay in power and it's fucking sad man <laughs> man i really be thinking like that's pretty really what we really worry about is the pharmaceutical companies because that's everyone's mo is to stay alive yeah <laughs> and like so they're always gonna bring in like <laughs> the most money <laughs> Right, they're always gonna have the most money because everyone that's that's what everyone's worried about is staying alive and enjoying their life. Yeah. So pharmaceutical companies, they're like, as long as we can stay in pocket with that, we got y'all. Fuck. <laughs> Man. I mean, then that's why it's just important to fucking you just gotta stay healthy with, with what yeah, you eat. Right. With every, yeah. <laughs> just so you don't let them get to you because they obviously want you to be unhealthy. Like <laughs> obviously they're giving you beer and donuts uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Take it donuts. for free free burgers <laughs> uh, all right let's, let's move on to the next topic um so i was gonna talk about uh team usa mm. man <laughs> they do need to be talked about Man, so they lost their first two games. Uh, first game was against Team Nigeria. Uh, they couldn't miss, uh, but Team USA also couldn't defend. <laughs> they could not. <laughs> they, to. They, they, they just have a bunch of offensive fucking superstars, but, like, <laughs> that can't play defense. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man. Maybe, do they want to play defense, though? Like, probably not like yeah it's just like i i see the usa team is like they look at the teams of the past and all you see is you know 145 point like to 45 games where autumn players i feel like autumn olympic players just want to kick it in tokyo take some little jump shots and get away with a gold medal i don't think they, they it does not seem like the, there's effort that needs to be put in to earn a gold medal while the world competition has been kind of elevating over the past couple decades yeah and i think that's what's like surprising team usa like now they're just like oh we always come in here and just do what we do and like they're, they're not even getting like they're not getting the same calls that they get in the nba and that's pissing them off and frustrating oh yeah, them. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Come on, 145 <laughs> points Solomon. how many free throws do they take <laughs> get that a, one a lot a right lot. there's a lot of free throws taken right Unless you're playing an extra eight minutes in the NBA, uh, you got a lot more time to get into rhythm. But, I mean, I don't know. Like, the past teams that were, like, super stacked, you would say they had some tough games with, like, Spain. And yeah, for sure. There was still some struggle games where it was close. They brought it down to the wire. Like, they were definitely grinded out games where they were not, you know, fooling around. And that team, those teams were way better than this team. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's not even close. You can't even compare them. <laughs> Can't even compare them. Yeah. But then, in other news, um, they had they ended up winning a game. Uh, they beat Argentina because their best player is forty one year old Luis Scola. I didn't even know he's basketball. Fucking cool. It's all great. He's funny. He's like, he looks like a cop. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Damn. Um, but two players ended up. I, I, yeah, two players ended up getting COVID, and then sure. two players ended up dropping out. So Jeremy Grant and Bradley Bill got COVID. And um, they're no longer able to play. Jeremy Grant will come back, apparently. But Kevin Love dropped out. I don't know why Kevin Love dropped out. Maybe because he's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. Like, he was literally only out there in garbage time with the scrubs. Like... He could not play any other. He's not. He's not at that level anymore. Uh, I don't even know why he got selected to the team. A lot of people say it was tokenism. Probably was. Probably. Uh, 
Because, well, yeah, what other white guy are you going to pick? Gordon Hayward's not coming. I mean, we, need some, we need someone to represent America and it's true for her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like uh, the last man that didn't make it on the roster was like Duncan Robinson or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Y'all too much. That's wild. No, this is real. This is a true story. True story. <laughs> because well, so they're, they're looking for alternates. They ended up picking up a practice player who's in the NBA on the Spurs, I think, Keldon Johnson. Okay. And uh, JaVale McGee is now on the Olympic team. I know. I think that. That's that's big for him. He was I mean, I'm happy for him because I think – Yeah, for sure. That's actually really nice. Pretty solid player. And he's going to do exactly what you need to do at that center position, um, at least in terms of defending. Yeah, um, for sure. That's really all you need, you need him for, somebody to stay stick on a big body so everybody else can focus on what they need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what – so that's why I think the Lakers really missed him, him and Dwight, because AD can, he had to focus on defending their best play, their best big guy, and then trying to bust his ass on the other end. It was too much. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so technically, Devin Booker is on the Olympic team, but so would he just join them after the yeah, final? Yeah, after the finals, Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, and Chris and Middleton. Chris Middleton are on there. Too. Oh, okay. Oh, now that's that. That'll be a. It makes uh, it a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, you got Drew Holiday is gonna lock up, and then you got Middleton and Devin. You see what they fucking do. <laughs> yeah, that, I, hey, we, we we called both the keys though. Fucking Middleton and Drew. I, I said they Middleton. You said Drew Holiday. Up. Like, oh, <laughs> they did. Yeah. Yeah. They did. Oh, what happened? They did. What happened to Chris? Oh, I apologize. Oh my God. To, I just apologize. You know, I know, man. Like, he didn't have a bad game. Like, well, but that was a – he fucked up at the end. Though. Like, well, Devin Book – so, like, he fucked up game three. He had, like, two turnovers in the end of the game. And then Devin Booker fucked points. up that game. Yeah, yeah. He Devin Booker had 10 points like, game three. Devin Booker did? Yes. Yeah. 10. Bro, <laughs> no, you can't be out here looking like points, fucking the ball. <laughs> Nigga, the fuck? And then Chris Paul, like, 10 points a game after that. <laughs> yeah, like it. Yeah. Can't get yeah, that. I, yeah, I want to hold. They, I was gonna say I want to hold off on that because that's gonna be my topic, bro. All right, all right. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we this is discussion. Let's keep talking about Team USA. What yes. do you guys feel is gonna happen in the Olympics? Um, this team is not doing. You know, they're not constructed well. Um. I'm really surprised they, they chose these players. I feel like there's a lot of players out there that maybe, I guess they just declined coming. I mean, I totally understand that. Like, why, why would you go and sit in a bubble? You could be at home with your fam, yeah. you know? I mean, like, I just feel like Dame and KD alone should be enough to just, like, to win most games. Like, to win these, like, they should definitely should have been enough against uh, Nigeria and Australia. But like they shouldn't even have to guard anybody. Like they should just be able to just win off offense alone. Like with with those two against those teams. But like I mean, like you said, maybe Nigeria is just you way can better. Double team. Just, you can force other players to be the primary ball handler, and there are other players on this court. While they are fantastic basketball club players, like you can easily mm-hmm. strategize, have a defensive strategy against the Team USA. Like it's, it's I mean, even Zach is, yeah. I see. Like they, that, they, I would, they, they, they don't even put the ball on the floor when they score. It's all, oh. it's all, all curls. <laughs> like, yeah, like, exactly. I, like, I, when you look bucket. at this, when I look at this team, the only two people that can get their own bucket, like, and I don't want to be disrespectful to these, these other players, but the only three players that I see can get their own bu- bucket is Dame, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant. Outside of that, like... I feel I like Jason Tatum would be... I, am, I, yeah. I understand. I understand that some people yeah. believe that. But if you watch how uh, the Boston Celtics play, that's not what happens on that team. Uh, Jason yeah. Tatum just does not go out there to get his own bucket, like, consistently. Like, he, yeah. he plays within the offense. He, he is extremely, the he's, he's extremely talented. <laughs> he's extremely talented. But like Paul George. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, it, it's hard to explain. Like, the best way I can explain it is uh, – so – this is he has to play within an offense. Reference. I'm going to bring a soccer reference in. So there was this – there's this young winger. His name is Phil Foden. He plays for Manchester City, who is, like, no doubt the best 
Premier League English team in the league. But the reason why they didn't start him on the English team is because when you bring players from like different teams into one team, what actually stands out is individual performance. Because what this Phil Foden kid couldn't bring to the English team was all he was doing was he was extremely good in the system that he fit in. Mm -hmm. But when he gets put on another team with another strategy, sometimes players can't be as effective. And when those players start becoming like the fourth and fifth option, it becomes extremely difficult. I think Bam Adebayo is a really good pickup for this team because he understands his role on this team as like that. He's going to be like a defensive boards. Like he has a post game when he needs it. Like they'll need to use him under like for undersized teams, like for against some of like the Asian Pacific Islander teams where their biggest dude is probably I don't know, six, nine, they're going to for sure let Bam go to work. Um, mm -hmm. But like for players like Jason Tatum, um, let me like just look at this list again. Like Zach Levine. Yeah. Man, like it's good. Like these guys will should be performing uh, like a lot better. I, and I hope Chris Middleton doesn't have to fall into this category as well. Yeah. Um, but he probably is because the entire offense revolves around Giannis's gravity and how he pulls players away from the ball, why they have to, like, the like with Giannis on a team, you can't have big men clog the paint. Because of that, you have other players like Middleton and Drew Holiday getting a higher amount of, like, baskets that they shouldn't be getting just because that big man is pulled out on Brooke Lopez. And so you literally, they play in a set where Giannis can run at the rim and all the other players benefit from that as well. When you go to a new team with Bam at a bio going to be at the high post and dropping down to the low post, he's not going to kick. He's not standing in the corner. Bam at a bio is not standing in the corner. And that four is probably going to be a, like a stretch four. But the whole point is there, there's going to be a big man in the middle. Will Chris Middleton be as effective when um, that help defense comes quicker? We don't know yet. Um, and it seems yeah. like for some teams, like when you switch out of your like primary like strategic offensive set, some players might not be as effective. I think there's some players immune to that, and I mentioned those names. Um, but sometimes, and especially with a team like this, who can't mesh together immediately, it might be difficult. But still, me personally, I think they're actually cognizant of it. Um, I think they'll be able to like perform really well. I think there will be a lot of struggle games. Um, I think there's going to be games where they don't get it together, but I still think they will win. They'll come out with this. Me personally, I, I personally don't know of um, any teams um, like I'm not sure if Slovenia with Luca might might do it. Uh, I know that they're they're a really solid team. Um, is Jokic rocking with Serbia this year? So. Okay, and so he might he might put in some work too. I'm not sure. I don't think it's I don't think Joel Embiid is playing for Cameroon no. or France. I'm not sure which one he plays for. Uh, yeah, it probably is France. It's probably oh, was it? No, no, that was um. Probably Ibaka was playing for Spain. Oh, he was Ibaka was the playing for Spain. But yeah, regardless, I don't know of any other team. But I think it might be Slovenia. It might be Spain. Um, and it might okay. be Canada. Apparently, uh, apparently, the Canada got no, some. They got a Wiggins. <laughs> well, no, nah, not even him, man. I see oh, some he's not. He... There's some other boys getting uh getting out there. I don't. There are no names. I don't even think they're in the NBA. Oh, is Ben Simmons going to play? Was Ben Simmons Absolutely playing for Australia? Not. Ben Simmons is not playing. Ben Simmons yeah, no. is practicing on a jump shot with a trainer. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. He's practicing <laughs> on a jump shot with a trainer. <laughs> I was about to say, maybe that's how they – I could have thought you seen him lose to Australia. But, yeah, Ben Simmons is enjoying his summer. Yeah, he's <laughs> – Yeah, he's going to – He's going to figure out what he's going to do next. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think actually, yeah, when those pieces come back, that's going to be awkward for Devin Booker, Chris Middleton, and uh, Drew Holiday. So. <laughs> like, bro, after, like, bro, one, if, one of them's going to take the L. Like, that's, I understand that. But, like, honestly, <laughs> if, we're, if, we're, if we're all millionaires playing yeah. and we lose a game and now we're in Tokyo, for, not for a paid gig, it's just for a gig, but everything is all expenses paid, yeah. I, think, I think we can get over it pretty quickly. True. <laughs> so, yeah, but so once those three come into the lineup, I think, 
everything I think changes. It, it will shorten right? up defensively a little bit. I think Drew Holiday and Middleton bring good, good defensive guard play. So I think that it'll help. Yeah. Who who starts when they're full squad? Probably. I, I have to believe it's um, Dame, D Book, KD. Um, it's going to be um, Bam at the five. I just don't know who's the four. And they might push KD down. Probably Tatum. They're probably starting Tatum and KD. Yeah, I'd probably do that too. Shit. Shit. If Middleton's coming off the ship, <laughs> then, like, am I have? <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. Your backup point guard. The backup point guard is Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday, right. Or Zach Levine. Well, I guess Zach plays the two. Yeah, I'd say, yeah. They might run at the... Look, yeah. That's what's up. He's got to defend. Like, yeah, I, like, think, exactly. I feel like they're, they're extremely talented. It's just an effort thing. I think it was the end of the season. I think they're taking this a little bit like, you know, I mean, with all the talk about, like, all the injuries in the playoffs – they like there's a lot of stress on the players like muscles joints and like i think there might have even been like a, a note from the coaches to take it easy in these pregame matches even though it looks bad i think it is maybe in the best interest of the players to like not go 100 percent until the olympics so who knows who knows i'm excited though to see what happens i think they're gonna be in for beat this this year Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of great players coming up in other countries, so we got to watch out for them. And um, I guess go Team USA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's get it. Get it. Yeah. All right. Let's, yeah, let's move on to the next topic, Solomon. Absolutely. I, I had to bring this topic up because this is shaping out to be a legendary series. I'm not going to lie, when coming into this series – I didn't like see the hype of it. I was just like, I might watch a g- game one and game five if needed. Man, I have been glued, like really glued to the series. Like this has been a really good series. Yeah. Like especially these last two games, they really turned it up. And what I kind of want to highlight here is just kind of like the shift in momentum from last week. Last week um, when we were chopping it up. The Phoenix Suns were up 2-0. Or, and they were up 1-0 when we were about to be 2-0. And they were looking fantastic. Uh, we knew that the Bucks were tough at home. But three games later, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Like, they are showing up and showing out. Like, I mean, not only is Giannis showing up and showing out, like, he is showing us, like, stuff that we haven't seen from him in terms of, like, when he's struggling – he is still producing numbers. Like there are times where he is not playing his best and he is still providing what the team needs. Chris Middleton is stepping up and looking like, I don't want to say this, but like he's looking like the finals MVP to me, looking like it. I just, just because when they need a bucket, they ask, they call this man's number and this man answers every time. And I don't see, he is not, not picked up the call. Like he has picked up the ball. The chances though, because Milwaukee has been going crazy on the offensive boards. But exactly, yeah. <laughs> I get it. But he is knocking them down. Right. And Drew, we were waiting. The X factor of all of this, it was just like waiting for the perfect time. And this man steps up in a game five. He drops twenty points in the first fucking half. Man, damn, bro, literally like. Game winning play, like everything <laughs> is clicking, bro. Do you know what this series reminds me of? Do you know what the series reminds me of? This reminds me of the 2006 series, bro. The Mavericks were the hot, like the favorites, bro. Coming into this series, it was Dirk doing his thing, he was stepping into his prime. Nobody was fucking with the West. Like, this dude beat the Tim Duncan San Antonio Spurs. This dude was rocking with the fucking the Phoenix Suns with um, Steve Nash and Amari. This wasn't Kobe's best year, but this was when Kobe himself as an individual was shooting lights out. This was that year. This was the year that, uh, I think this was like the year Kobe like hit like in a 11 game stretch in January where he went like, we were drawing 81. Was that the year that they swept, they swept the Lakers and like fucking uh, Andrew Bynum, like fucking clothesline JJ. No, 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 no,
That was the year the Mavericks won. Oh, yeah, that was uh, 2012 or 11, 11, 11. 11, 11 yeah, 11, but all that to say, all that to say, <laughs> it was a momentum shifter. This was a momentum shifter. So Dallas Mavericks, they knocked down the first two series. The only difference between this series and that is game five was at the away team's location. This game five was at like the home team's location. So it was in Phoenix, but it was bang, bang. Bang, bang. And all those games were tough games. All of them. Milwaukee has to had to fight for each one of these games. Outside of game three, they like they fought for game four. They fought for game five. And they they took that shit. Yeah. And they're, they're they are extremely, extremely they took the ball at the end of the game. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just watching. <laughs> Damn. <Yeah. laughs> That's that. That's that shit as a kid. <laughs> this is crazy. Damn. But is that just is that just the inexperience of Devin Booker? Like with the, I mean, the with that with that turnover, like. But then again, Chris Paul did similar turnovers, and he's super experienced. So like, it's just he just lost the ball. Like yeah, he, he got, like. I don't know, bro. It, like, I think it was it was too much trying to be like the hero, I guess. Like everyone yeah. was looking at Devin Booker. So like he, I don't know, man. Like I always think like you shouldn't try to like, I always like, figure like you should try to do a step back in a situation like that instead of like trying to drive in and like, but who knows? But <laughs> like especially if you're with his like skill set, like mm-hmm. like do a drive in crossover step back and then pull. <laughs> something like that like but he yeah. wanted to go at the rim it looked like i mean i'm not sure if he was looking for the foul i think he just wanted to get close enough to elevate to get yeah. that jump shot but right there, the, he was probably he was like trying to spin right and then drew just timed it perfectly so, yeah just, he was like, just, like yeah and it looked, the, the strip looked so clean it was like <laughs> that perfect timing where like that ball was going to be exposed like in that one block period yeah. or like that one little range and in that perfect timing Comes yeah. in Devin Booker was kind of off in the fourth quarter, early the last couple minutes yesterday. And Chris Paul was hitting. What'd you say? Yeah. It's just Chris Paul was hitting, but Devin Booker was, I mean, he had a great game. Devin Booker had an amazing game. Oh, it was like in close fire, time, yeah. But he wasn't hitting at the end of that game. So I was, yeah. I was surprised they went to him because Chris Paul had just hit like three shots in a row. Yeah, that shot over Giannis was really nice too. Right, I'm like, if you that like that, then why don't you go to him? Like, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that's, that's how he's feeling today. Then you should stick with that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, it's just, I don't know. I, I don't know what was going through the Phoenix kind of playbook at the time, but like it seemed like all the gears were turned on for Milwaukee. Everybody was on the same page. And I was just like, I mean, for y'all, who was, I guess, the most impressive performer of Game Five? Uh, I probably give it to Drew Holiday. I feel it. Yeah, yeah. No. like <laughs> stepped up, like, like twenty-seven, thirteen. Uh, crucial defensive plays, that's like all and a, that's, yeah, game-winning that's steal that's and game-winning like assist, <laughs> like perfectly that executed. Is, like, that play <laughs> is going to be cemented. That man, yeah. Got it. I'm a, I, I, I'm very impressed that Giannis is able to do what he needs to do every game, for despite whether or not he's yeah. well. I think that's super yeah. impressive. Like, I mean, yeah. like, in a series like this, not afraid to shoot because even though he's shooting like fifty percent, he's just like, I'm not yeah, he's shooting terribly. I just got to do this. He's saying, "Fuck it, step up." He's, he's stepping up. up. He's stepping he up. up in every way. In every way, whenever you like. It's, yeah, and I think like that's so, I think it's so much more beneficial than having a jump shot. Right. Like, yeah, you know, I, I take it back. I know I was. This. <laughs> What's up? Like, like, he's like, like, the ball. like, he's just like letting yeah. teammates get comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know I was, I, I was like, I was hating. Look, like, like, that's why, like, I Middleton compliments. Hate. That's why, like, Middleton compliments him so much, though, because, like, Mid, like in those situations, Giannis is willing to let like okay, Middleton's hitting, like I'm gonna let him, I'm gonna let him rock. But like right. you know, on the fast break, like you know, you can go to Giannis and it's a guaranteed bucket, or he's gonna get fouled. But like, you can give it to me, you already know what I'm about to do, but <laughs> you don't have to give it to me. I'm gonna yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get an offensive rebound. Get it. <laughs> get it. Get it. Yeah, you can shoot it. But I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> yeah. Bro. 
No, that's great. No, no, like Giannis is doing his thing. Milton is doing his thing. And Drew Holiday is doing his thing. Like I, even even some of the bench players like was stepping up too. Like Bobby Portis had like a little stretch in the right. second quarter. Bobby Portis out here. Crazy Who knew? Shots, right? Who knew? But that's I, that's I really admire that that was the adjustment that they made was being so heavy on making sure you're getting every rebound. Yeah. That's that's their advantage over Phoenix. Like we're not yeah. probably not going to outshoot them. But we can, we're bigger than them. So we have to, any, any loose ball, we got to get to it. And they're faster than us. So we got to take care of the ball. We can't get lost in turnovers. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're doing. They're, they're taking care of the ball and they're getting every rebound. And yeah. that's really all they got to do. It's basics. Basics. It's, and they're looking great doing it. They're looking great doing it. Yeah. And man, I was just going to ask y'all like, now, now we're at the series, it's three, two bucks. Where do you have? Do you have <laughs> I can't even. Game? I've been wrong about every prediction I've made <laughs> in this playoff. Like, there's only two games left. <laughs> only yeah. two games left. So what do you think? Like, do you I, see the Bucks winning next game at home? Or do you the way see it's looking running? out? Like, yeah, I think the Bucks close it out for the next game. You don't, Brandon? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think the Bucks are going to win the series for sure. Okay. For sure. For sure, I think the Bucks are going to win the series. That's what I call after uh, Philly gave up on Ben Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. It's probably probably going to be the Bucks this year. Okay. Playing the, like, my thing is, like, who's playing the best team basketball? Yeah. And I, I, honestly, I'm not mad <laughs> not either way, whoever wins. Like, I'm really not mad at it. So, like, yeah. <laughs> it's uh... – oh. It's like the first year in a while where it's like that, right? Yeah. Huh? It's the first year in a while where it's like that for a majority of fans, where it's like a lot of fans aren't mad whether, like, the Bucks or the Suns win. Because there's I'd no point. Like, the Suns win. I ain't going to lie. I get that. For some, <laughs> some Warriors fans, I know for some Warriors fans, there's, like, a CP3 thorn, like, <laughs> in the side of every Warriors fan. And so that, I, I understand that part of it. But I'm saying – like. Most fans, like if you're not a Warriors fan, like or a Suns fan or a Bucks fan, like you're actually okay with regardless whatever team wins. And it's like it's fun. It's fun for the neutrals. It's so weird. Like I'll be watching like lay people watching game, like my mom or like you know like my grandma. Every time like Phoenix or Phoenix like loses the ball or Milwaukee scores, they're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> So they picked their team. <laughs> they picked their team in their heads. Right. I feel like a lot of people like Chris Paul. He's on TV all the time. You know what I'm saying? Being likable. So I don't. I don't know. Like, I feel like the world wants Chris Paul to win this championship. He's been advertised to Middle America for too long. Like reps by letting Devin Booker hack whoever they want. <laughs> like, Bro, that was crazy. It's Seven pals. <laughs> beat people up. <laughs> it's like he knew they weren't going to call that foul, too, because he went in like... No, you didn't, they really let people beat people up in the NBA. Like, they really do that. <laughs> and they said the wild. NBA was soft. Come on now. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it is what it needs to be. You know what I'm saying? In the time that it needs to be, yeah, absolutely. It is. What it yeah, needs that to be. game needed Devin Booker to stay on the court, and the NBA made a call, and they were like, "No, we're not taking him out the game. That's money lost. So, <laughs> like, we'll change the rules. Don't worry. All right, everyone will turn this off. Turn the TV off if Devin Booker fouls out. Yeah, turn yeah. The, the game is over. Then all that. <laughs> you see those advertising dollars <laughs> spilling down the drain right there. Right. Yeah. We're, we're, we're changing the rules for two seconds. Just give us <laughs> <just give yourself. laughs> Hell no. Good show. Oh, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. You know what's Go crazy ahead. is the Warriors, speaking of the Warriors, they're actually favorited going into next year. No. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Well, <laughs> with who? Just Steph and Clay? Steph, Clay, Wiggins? Steph, Clay, Wiggins. Wow. Right. We're, we're favorited. And two Number seven and number 14. We might dish it out. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, we need to. Oh, man, we need to. It'll be great. It'll be great. I feel, like, I feel like if anything, they'll get rid of Wise but they'll probably keep Wiggins. I don't think anybody really wants Wiggins. I mean, he is now two years into that contract, though. 
So it's not as bad to eat for a team. Like to get, because now it's, what is it? It's two years 60. Mm-hmm. So it's a two years 60. Like that's not that bad for teams to take in consideration for a trade at this stage. So I just wanted to put that out there. Even though Wiggins may be overpriced, the 4 122, yeah, sure. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to hold that. But 260 doesn't seem. But do we just give him away? Or are we just like. No, we, we package him with. Right? We, always, we, we always have to package the picks because I don't know what about it. The pick, it seems like picks are having more value these days mm-hmm. outside of Oklahoma. But like, it seems like. People are valuing picks. And don't got no one to take. Them. I don't know what their strategy is, bro. I don't know what their strategy is. <laughs> no one wants the picks. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, yeah, their picks. Their picks are different because it's just like that. Seems like they're going to be the new kings. They'll come to us eventually. Don't worry about. They're going to be the new kings. They're literally going to be the new kings. Yeah, <laughs> like the way they rookie contracts away. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much like, you know that G League team. This is just going to be that G League team in the NBA. They're ignite. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bros. I don't know. I don't know. But regardless, I think um, I think I think Wiggins can get pushed um, with the right with the right contracts, and I think we can get someone of value. Are we just looking to do get somebody better than Wiggins, or are we looking to get somebody? No, the system. We're, we're we're always about the system. Like Steph and Clay, for me personally, I think Steph has like three to four good prime years left. Um, it's all about surrounding Clay, like putting Clay Thompson in the right positions. So like. First, first year out, uh, we just want to make sure he doesn't get injured. But we want to make sure he is going to be that number, the right-hand man to Steph for this, like, prime years for that. Outside of them, too, it's kind of just calibrating. Like, we already have the formula, like, in terms of what we need to do with our ball movement. It's just kind of having those complementary pieces, like the defensive part. Like, can we have someone who protects the paint? Like, that was an issue with us um, kind of going back. Um, can we have um, an off-ball distributor, like, if, if in the event that we do not have Draymond Green during the stretch, but, like, we also need that, like, person who is distributing as a big. Like, that's very big for our team in terms of the ball movement, as well as can be a defensive presence. And then that third person is just another, like, it, that's kind of our X factor. I, I feel like we're going to have – we're going to need a two, we're gonna need a two-way player. Yeah, we, like Ben Simmons will fit perfectly here because we need a two-way <laughs> player who can play defense and just plays with the offense. We don't need necessarily someone who is impacting kind of the flow of the game. I think the best players that we've had to complement Steph and Clay outside of Kevin Durant are players who go with the flow of the game, like our Iggy's, um, like. I don't know those wingmen like that. Harrison like, Barnes. <laughs> Harrison Barnes was nice. Brandon Rush. Like, like, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm throwing out yeah. random names, but like, like who yeah. are in there who know who know when to step up, who know when to make the cut, and who know how who knows how to stand in the fucking corner when Steph is driving, so the kickout is there. I don't want Ben Simmons in the corner though. For sure not. For sure not. And the thing is, Ben Simmons, I, in my head, Ben Simmons would have to replace that Draymond Green role in terms of that that big who kind of facilitates that's not Steph. So we trading Ben Simmons for Draymond Green? I mean, we can't have Ben Simmons and Draymond Green on the same team on the floor. Wiggins together. and it Draymond. Would be, it would be ben. ineffective. It would be, I, I believe it would be ineffective to have both of those guys on the court together. I believe so. That's what I'm saying. This is where you lose me because I'm like, I want Ben Simmons, but then I wouldn't, I don't think it's worth, that's not worth losing Draymond. Okay. Yeah. And that's fine. But like what I'm saying with with their styles of play, um, I, I don't believe you can have those two players on the same court with Steph because they're just like those teams will both know to sag off of Draymond and Simmons, and it'll just be it'll pretty much be a box one kind of formation where they'll pretty much have Steph a shadow. Man. There's team. like there's a shadow man on Steph with someone always hovering nearby just in case, you know, there's a split second where Steph gets open. Like, having Draymond and Ben Simmons on the court together can make it easier for a defense to just, like, yeah, we'll go under the screens because our next our, – our man, the second man is going to step up. I think 
I think it could work. Okay. I think it work. I feel it. Like- it'll be it'll be tough, but I think with Clay coming back, I think it'll space the floor out. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah, ridiculously space the floor out. Always, yeah. always. I mean, we really just got to run baseline, and then you can put Ben Simmons or Draymond in the dunker spot, setting the pick for him. Mm-hmm. And then you got whatever going on in the in the backcourt. Yeah, it's the typical roll. Mm-hmm. I tell you. That makes sense to me, but I don't know. I I just don't want to lose Draymond because I think. Him and Steph got such a chemistry together. They do. Point. It's invaluable. It's a more value. It's yeah. It's invaluable that type of chemistry. Because I, I like yeah. It, like that's kind of what I'm trying to hit home. Like that that flow of the game. The flow of the game is the most important part. Um, kind of having an understanding of the players on the floor. Um, it's kind of having that intuition. Like you're the play is running, and it's like knowing like this player will audible this play in this fashion if the defensive set is structured to kind of prevent us from running our play smoothly you know what i'm saying it's like knowing those instead of steph curling out he's going to pretend like he's curling out and do a back pass three months at the high post he'll hit the pocket pass it's like no like knowing that before the play even happens like i think they had they had that connection and it's it's pretty much the reason why we've won championships it's because the ball <laughs> movement it's because of that ball movement and knowing where that next person is going to be before they get there. But yeah, regardless of uh, that's kind of the Warriors next year. Um, I do want to give, you know, big props to the Bucks um, so far um, because it's job's not done, you know, job's not done at all. So it'll be interesting to see uh, for my personal prediction. Um, I think it's going to actually mimic that 06 series. And I think um, they're going to take it at home. So I, w- I personally believe I was wrong in my um, predictions because um, I initially believed that Devin Booker was the best player on that court. Yeah. It actually seems like that might not be the case. Yeah. So, uh, he's maybe they figured out how to guard him. Talented. I would not. Talented. 100% in terms of talent. But again, I- put on a clinic off the backboard. He looked like Tim Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. It was really nice. <laughs> But yeah, I, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be Bucks next game. Is that the is it gonna be Monday or Tuesday? Uh, it's probably Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, they've been going like every two days or something. Yeah, like with, the, with the travel, I feel it. Yeah, right. Tuesday. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. Um, I hope. I mean, I'm probably actually gonna we gonna bring it up at least once next pod because you yep. know. Gotta, yep, gotta, but so by next cool. pod, then we might have an NBA champion. We will. We yeah, absolutely will. We absolutely <laughs> will. Yeah, our next pod. And we'll yeah. talk about that. And then I think the following week, the um, Olympic oh, start. Yeah. So that'd be pretty cool. That'd be a pretty cool little uh, lead up into that. Definitely have shit to talk about. Yeah. 100%. 100%. <laughs> what, what, what other uh, Olympic events are you guys planning on checking out or just monitoring? Um, for me personally, I always check out uh, soccer. Um, mm-hmm. and some of like the track events, uh, like soccer, basketball, some of the track events. And then, um, like sometimes I'll like put on a random sport, like something I've never seen competitively before. <laughs> just like yeah, just... yeah, women's beach volleyball. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, bruh, like ping pong, like table tennis, man. <laughs> it's just intense. <laughs> Fencing. <laughs> Fencing is the coldest, like, visually aesthetic thing in the world but right? you just have one really slim piece of metal that's so flimsy that it'll bend when you poke but it's just like a game of it's the most complicated game of tag you'll ever see <laughs> yeah it's You're in the same doing... exact place yeah. yeah it'll be cool that thing and ping pong are pretty crazy like that reactionary time is just ridiculous mm-hmm. all right check out um gymnastics um maybe some swimming swimming is always fun of course the track events uh i think there's skateboarding and uh three on three now too oh yeah there is three on three usa three on three team we didn't make it we didn't make it no 
<laughs> Damn. Uh, <laughs> I guess like, well, I mean, if our best are playing in the five on five, then man, shut the fuck up. We, we couldn't have got some people. Our worst to be able to make that shit. We couldn't have got someone from the big three league. So do you know who <laughs> was our? Qual- I'm gonna check who our qualifying team was. I kind of want to just shit on them. Just for just the- uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. USA three v three. The national team. Okay, I found the qualifying team. Man. Okay, so <laughs> God damn. <laughs> so we got Robbie Hummel from Purdue, <laughs> Dominique <laughs> Jones from Fort Hayes State University, Joey King from University of Minnesota, Kareem Maddox from Princeton University. So that was our qualifying team. So they were all just like college athletes. Yes. Right. Random college athletes. Like this is not even ranked college athletes. Like we couldn't have tried to get like some of like we could, like even people who are playing like overseas, like maybe like their schedule wouldn't have allowed it. But like like if, if it wasn't an NBA player, it could have been like an overseas player that's just like killing it in another league. Or yeah, something. Something like, but, like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, like I want to show you this dude's face. Like I saw this face and I was just like, like this is represent- <laughs> yes. Like that. Yeah. yeah. That's a perfect representation of him. Like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they niggas from the Julie. He's like, I know he'll cook me because he plays for a college, but like. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's the beat other professional basketball players. Like, I mean, clearly, nobody cared about three on three. <laughs> so. Yeah, I get that. Maybe for next year. It's like, you know how the USA started with these like, college rosters? for the Olympic squad until they got smacked so much it was a little bit of an embarrassment. So we might actually have to get embarrassed first. This is embarrassing in itself. So who knows? They might come out and get buckets. (laughs) They're not because they're not close. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot. (laughs) 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 I'm not even gonna let you have the chance, bro. Women national team three on three though. They got a national team for women's Okay, for sure. Well, we'll root for them. Yeah, definitely, definitely got to check them out. Um, I think their five on five team is going to be pretty good too. For sure, the women's five on five team is probably really. Good. It's mid season too, though. Mm-hmm. So they just they just dropping off the NBA squads for Olympics. That actually makes sense. They're going to get more coverage. Like they don't. Way more, way more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually makes all complete sense. Yeah, yeah. They, they probably like paused the WNBA season for this or something. Like, no, they didn't. No, no, they're oh, running through. Yeah. They're just gonna oh, say yeah. this season. Yeah. <laughs> <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> this is just this is an opportunity for um, um some some second tier players to you know run the league for like a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, for sure. All right. Well. I'm probably going to get to this food. It's been sitting here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all good. I am down to, uh, you know, catch up with y'all next week because it was definitely good talk with y'all. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, man. We'll, uh, we'll convene, reconvene next week. Uh, before we head out, anything you guys want to plug before we dip? Mm, nothing for me this week. Damn. I, st- I, wanna, I still want to plug something, even though I have nothing to plug. But yeah, I got nothing to plug. Well, me, of course, tapped in. Uh, it's an uh, online marketplace for black owned businesses. If you're interested in supporting black owned businesses, go to tappedin.shop and check it out. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. It's been the Mostly Bullshit Podcast. Yep. All right, y'all. Peace. Thanks. Peace. All right, y'all. Catch y'all later.